A young psychiatrist Dr. James Martin comes to a county penitentiary to do a psychological evaluation of a serial killer named Edward Brady. Brady's life depends on James's verdict. Will he be executed that very night? Or will his insanity save him from death row? The prison warden warns James that Brady is a skillful manipulator that will do anything to stay alive. James is showing no signs of insecurity but he's not ready when the convict tells him that he's not Edward Brady, but a demon named Nefarious, who can't wait to see Brady executed. You won't see a single drop of blood throughout the entire movie. And yet, Nefarious is a thoroughbred horror, which, in a sense, is more sinister and oppressing than many blood-soaked slashers. The story plays out like a theater piece. About 80% of the film takes place in one room, where the two characters dive into a deep, thought-provocative conversation about the ways of the world. In America, there is an entire niche of Christian-themed films. Financed by various religious organizations, these movies target very specific audiences. But for few high-grossing titles, Christian films go mostly unnoticed. It's hardly surprising seeing that those are basically sermons in disguise, cinematic illustrations to the Bible. Writers-directors Chuck Konzelman and Carrie Solomon are veterans of Christian cinema. If you look into their filmographies, you will find a bunch of theological dramas with telltale titles like What If? Do You Believe? And God's Not Dead. Nefarious is not their first attempt at a genre film, but surely the most successful one so far. The film unfolds as a dialogue between two cultures. James Martin is a product of a modern Western world. He doesn't believe in God or the devil. He lives by liberal values and considers himself a good person. Speaking on behalf on the devil, Brady is slowly tearing his worldview apart, making convincing references to history, psychology, sociology and theology. Of course, this can't be considered a true argument, as James, unable to prove his point, often finds himself with his back to the wall. But after all, it's not a political debate that we're watching, but a feature film with a plot and a moral. The creators of Nefarious are advocates of traditional Christian values, and they have a right to speak out, just like progressive and secular people, who basically shape modern-day cinema in America and Europe. From the point of storytelling, Nefarious is a solid piece of cinema. Konzelman and Solomon skillfully build up suspense and craft an engaging dialogue, giving Sean Patrick Flannery an opportunity to deliver the best performance of his career. Flannery is outstanding in portraying Brady as an incarnation of evil, a vessel for dark thonic forces. If anything, this role can be Flannery's lucky ticket to stardom. The actor emits a primordial magnetism. You can't take your eyes off his expressive face, and even the tiniest details about his character, such as a nervous tick or obsessive movements, keep you on the edge and fill you with a vague anxiety. And while there is no doubt that Nefarious is a religious sermon, or even propaganda, it looks extremely good disguised as a gripping psychological horror. Why so tense, atheists? 